UK has been raising their tax rates and it is time for people to escape that rising tide. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what people from UK can do to avoid the now rising or now having risen taxes. The UK tax year just kind of started uh, early April and so it came with it a nice increase in the costs for people who are involved, in particular a jump in the corporate tax rate by about 6%. So what can you do? That is going to be our topic today. Now, I've had lots of clients from UK. It's probably one of the most common places that people call us from, and so hence it makes a lot of sense to discuss this. Now, uh, for those who are not familiar, UK used to be kind of pre-Brexit, sort of a, a reasonable trying to be the most competitive tax regime in Europe place, and they have moved away from that. Of course, uh, Liz Truss tried to do something about maybe reversing that upcoming trend and the markets as well as the voters, I guess, obliterated her. She famously survived less than the length of time of a head of lettuce in a, uh, in a bet, kind of a sad commentary on British politics, I guess. But this could mean that for a lot of people who are running small businesses as well as medium and large businesses, of course, the tax rate is going to rise quite a bit. You're going to end up being hit with a lot more tax than you were in previous years. So what are the things you can do? Well, one of the things you can do certainly is move away. And UK is wonderful in the sense that A, they have the statutory residency test, which means that it's very clear whether you're a resident or a non-resident. And in fact, UK citizens can be resident nowhere. So it is possible, in theory, for a UK person to go and to be a perpetual traveler or use some sort of trifecta strategy or something like that uh, in order to avoid it. Now, in order to do that, you typically have to be out at least uh, all, all of the year except for 90 days. That's it's a little bit more complex than that. You can go and look up the statutory residency test. I've done some videos on this in the past. But if you're willing to be outside of UK for more uh, or all the year less 90 days with 30 days working, you can typically make that viable, barring a few little exceptions. So that's one thing you can do. The next thing you can do, of course, is you can stay inside the country and you can try and optimize uh, your corporate tax. Certainly, you know, if you're in business, you're probably in a situation where you're trying to do that already by maximizing your write-offs. Or you can do what it is that we help people with here. Uh, we obviously help people relocate abroad as well. So, you know, if you want to relocate to UAE or to Thailand or to Cyprus or to... Costa Rica or Panama or any of these fancy places where you can save on taxes, definitely reach out to us about that. But you can also do so potentially for the right type of business uh, while still remaining a resident of UK, which may be of interest to some people. So how does that work? Well, we always think about the ways in which UK is allowed to tax us. So what we're talking about here is not eliminating the personal tax. Personal tax, to the extent that you earn income, you're still going to be taxable as a UK resident. Now you could, in the future, depart UK, no longer be a resident, and take the money out tax-free personally. Great, fantastic situation. There's no exit tax in the UK, that's awesome. But here we're talking in particular about reducing or eliminating the corporate tax. So what do we have to do to do that? Well, first thing we have to understand is it's not so simple as just forming a company in another country. Okay, I've done some videos previously about corporate residency, and the issue here is that a company in UK is not taxable on its worldwide income based on where it is registered, but rather based on where it is resident. And residency for corporate tax purposes in UK is based not just on place of registration, but also on place of management and control. In other words, if I'm sitting in UK, I set up a company in Hong Kong or UAE or Labuan or somewhere else, that company is going to be taxable in UK to the extent that it is managed and controlled from UK. Now, management and control is like this really nebulous, complex concept drawn from a whole bunch of case law over about 100 years. And, you know, I could give you a lengthy description when we do full analysis and we build full structures for people. We have this very detailed list that we go through. We kind of examine the case law and we show you, okay, here's the things you have to pay attention to. But loosely speaking, it means that the highest level decisions, the decisions that would be kind of director level, need to be made outside of UK. Now, notably, they don't need to be made in the country where the company is. For example, you could form a company in Cyprus, but you could have the decisions made in Bulgaria. That would be still workable because the decisions are still made outside of UK. That doesn't mean that you know, Cyprus might not tax it, or in that case, in Bulgaria's case, they don't have management control rules, but you know, maybe you did it in some other place. You could trigger some tax over there is the bottom line. But you have to do this, okay? And these people are not just somebody's name on the register. It's not like they can be some shadowed fake director. 
It's not a nominee. It's a real person who has real responsibility, who has real decision making involved, and we should be able to document and back that up. Okay, so we'll have director's meetings and we'll have notes showing the minutes of the meetings, et cetera. If there was ever an analysis by HMRC, then we could defend that. So that's the first thing that is necessary. Okay, so you, you form a company abroad in a country that is low or no tax, and you have the management and control of that company take place outside of UK. Now, clearly, you know, it also has to be someplace that's not gonna trigger some other tax, but we're gonna kind of figure that out. And that's gonna be, where that is gonna be is really gonna depend on the nature of your business. You know, do you need payment processing? Where are your clients? What are the currencies you're dealing with? Do you have VAT considerations? Uh, what is the situation in terms of your team? What do the operations look like, et cetera, okay? And this brings us to our second point, right? Which is, well, that foreign company, if all of the work is being done in UK, is still gonna be taxable in UK. So a foreign company will be taxable in UK to the extent that it has UK source income. UK source income, again, I've done videos on source income and explained kind of a little bit about what that is about. Source income does not mean, okay, that you are in a situation where the customers are in UK. It is more typically based on where the operations are. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Depends on the type of income, and you're in a situation where you also have to pay attention in particular to permanent establishments, and that factors into, you know, are there tax treaties that might protect you and things like this. But bottom line, you need to be in a situation where there is substantial real operations taking place out of you outside of UK. Okay. Now, a lot of people might be in a situation where they are going to be in UK and they're going to be doing some of the work in UK. So how does that work, right? Well, the answer is we want to split up that income. We want to say, okay, we want the majority of the profits to be abroad and we want to be, have then whatever, minimize whatever we can in terms of the actual operations, the actual value add activities in UK. Okay, so let's just say it's you. So you're the one who you're sitting there, I don't know, doing media buying or you're doing management or you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, right? Sales, customer relations, something like that. You're sitting in UK. Well, there's clearly some economic value add in UK and that needs to be compensated for. So what we would typically do is we'd typically set up a UK holding company. The UK holding company would own a foreign company. Again, the details of which we have to figure out. Uh, and then there would be some sort of a transactional relationship between those two companies to compensate for the work that's actually done in UK, okay? Now, or the economic value add more appropriately that is being done in UK, okay? Fair enough. Now, this is what's called the transfer pricing arrangement. Transfer pricing is subject to special regulatory rules. You can't just charge whatever you want. You can't say, oh, great, well, let me have a company that makes $10 million a year in UK, and I'll set up a foreign company, and that foreign company will build, you know, $9.8 million and extract all the profit. You can't do that, okay? Uh, you can have genuine transactional relationships between these two companies, and this can genuinely reduce the tax payable in UK. If you exceed a certain threshold, then there is reporting obligations that go with that. There is special standards in terms of how you have to do the pricing and doing transfer pricing studies and things like this. That's again, more complicated than this particular video. If you're interested in that stuff, reach out to us. We'll help you go through the process of figuring out what's the best solution for you and designing it around your business and all that sort of thing. But the bottom line is this is important. Okay, so that's the next part. The third part is even if you have a foreign company, okay, you set up, uh, and that foreign company is genuinely foreign, and it has real foreign operations. You can still be taxable based on the ownership, depending on what's going on. And this is called controlled foreign companies rules. Again, I've done a video on controlled foreign companies rules. For some reason, when I talk to people around the world, I talk to all sorts of people from all different countries, what I frequently find is they confuse controlled foreign companies with management and control. And they don't really seem to have a, a strong concept of this. So controlled foreign companies are based on the ownership of the company. Okay, if you have over a certain ownership threshold, in UK we're talking about 25%, uh, so if you own more than that, then you could be taxable on your share of the income of that company, even if it is all foreign. Now, that's not necessarily true, okay? So it needs to both meet the status of it is a controlled foreign company and the income needs to meet the criteria. And UK has this complex gateway streaming test system that I'm not gonna get into the specifics of here. Uh, but the bottom line is, very often if you have a non-passive business, so uh, it's not like investment income, it's actually active business that's making real money through real operations to real customers, et cetera, then you 
probably can plan around that. Now, there are some other ways using trusts and foundations and things like this that we can work around that. There are trade-offs of doing that. Whether it's going to make sense in your case or not is, you know, a completely different question. Uh, as well as, you know, maybe you have partners abroad and there's things that can be done in terms of how you structure with them. There's a variety of different things that can be done in this regard. But the bottom line is you have the ability, potentially, to plan this out so that you say, okay, I'm building my company. Great. I'm going to hire some people. Okay. Do I need to hire those people in UK? Well, you know what? No, I could probably hire them in Southeast Asia. I could probably hire them in Africa. I could probably hire them in Eastern Europe. I could probably hire them in Latin America. I could, you know, wherever that happens to be in, for your particular business. And every business is different. And this is why we plan around the specifics of your company. Okay. Uh, great. Now I've got that. Well, to match that, I probably want a foreign company. Okay, so let's go and register a company. Now, Michael, where should I register the company? Right? You can reach out to us. You can book a call. Uh, sometimes this is complicated enough that we need to do like a full analysis and we need to design a custom strategy for you and things like this. That's a little bit more involved than calls, but at the very least, you can book a call uh, and we can go over it. Uh, or you can send a message through offshorecitizen.net and we can have that discussion there. Anyway, uh, so we say, okay, great. We're going to form this company. Great. We'll help you set up the company based on where it's going to make sense for your business. Perfect. Now we're going to put those operations in here. Now it's not enough, so we have to get some sort of foreign management and control. All right. We can deal with that in a couple ways. We can hire a foreign fiduciary. That's possible. It's a little bit complicated in terms of the operations. It can kind of make things a little bit complicated. Uh, but that being said, it's viable. Or we can be in a situation where you can put people on staff and you can hire them and hopefully they have operational responsibilities so you get better bang for your buck in that regard as well. Now, might there be some training involved in that, those people? Yeah, there might be, right? There's a little bit of stuff that goes into that. On the other hand, maybe you're lucky you already have a business partner or something abroad and the business partner can be responsible for it. Or maybe you've got a few business partners who are in UK and somebody's willing to move to Dubai and they'll be that person so that the other people don't have to worry about it. Or, you know, of course, maybe you can all move. So that's kind of the next piece. And then, great, that company's going to make a whole bunch of money. That company can pay dividends back to the UK company tax-free. Okay, so the UK company can essentially eliminate that 25% corporate tax, at least on the portion of income that is not attributable to UK. And then you have a couple things that you can do. Obviously, you're in a situation where, you know, you can take income and, yeah, you'll pay the dividend tax on it, but, you know, at least you missed the corporate tax, so you saved a bunch there. Or you might just keep the money in the company. You might invest it and grow it and decide, okay, at some point in the future, you're going to take off. You'll move to Portugal and you'll pay out the dividends tax-free and you'll be good to go. Or maybe you go to Cyprus or you go to Thailand or you go to UAE or wherever else and you're able to pay the money out, you'd get a great, uh, a great deal there. Uh, you may also decide, okay, well, I'm going to have some shareholders loans and I can take advantage of that. There's different ways you can plan around what to do uh, with the money once it's in the company tax-free. But this is what you will do as your method, broadly speaking. Uh, this is obviously you know, really not specific. I can't give you specific advice uh, in a video like this. There's you know, thousands of different combinations. But for those who are interested in escaping the bite of the new UK uh, tax rules, uh, there's some other things I haven't mentioned here, but you know, this will give you a general overview. And you can see whether it's something that might work in your case. It's worth noting that if you're just a one-person business, you can't. This will not work for you. If you're somebody who is, you know, day trading or just investing or something, this will not work for you. But if you have a business that you have employees and you're going to be growing your team, etc., then it might be worth it. So if that's interesting to you, please reach out to us and you can book a call with me. Calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer. Link in the description below, or send a message through offshorecitizen.net. Uh, if you're somebody from somewhere else in the world, you are interested in you know, relocating abroad, optimizing your global tax, etc., please reach out to us. Uh, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, hit the subscribe button, and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.